Hello and welcome to Show Studio. It's Paris Fashion Week and we have got a panel to do. We are on Edwin Moni's amazing set. Everyone's feeling very comfortable, if not a little. <laughs> and we're very excited to be talking about Virgil, Ablo Virgil Abloh's debut at Louis Vuitton. Merely hours ago, Virgil showed in Paris and it has of course been all over the internet. For some who don't partake in the internet, Josh over here, you may not have seen it. But for the rest of us, obviously, it's been a saturation of images and video clips. I think no one could have missed Kanye and Virgil crying <coughs> at the end of the show. But let's take ourselves back a bit, pretend we haven't seen everything, and think back to March of this year when this big news was announced. It felt like a very seminal moment in fashion. I'm interested what people's initial reactions were. Shall I write in my eye line? So I'll turn to you. What did you think? <laughs> I was. Um, skeptical, I think, at first, mm. but now I've had a real 180. So I think I think the title of him being artistic director rather than like chief designer or something like that was interesting because he himself has said that he's not really a designer; he's more of, I suppose, mm. a curator. Or he designs in like a much more multifaceted way. Mm. Um, but nonetheless, I was intrigued to see what he would do. Um, mm. What were you expecting? Um, I think, uh, like everyone else, I was expecting a lot of streetwear and view, like streetwear couture kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then from the show, sorry, spoiler, <laughs> but like there was, it started with tailoring, mm -hmm. which was interesting. But I do think that as it evolved, it got more and more street and more and more kind of what you'd expect mm -hmm. from something. And also, I guess his off-white show was such a departure mm -hmm. in terms of trying to get them on a very different, mm -hmm. like, viewing point with so the Bart Simpson references and stuff. Mm -hmm. We'll dive in in a bit. So you had a 180, is really a little bit. Saying. Is there anyone who was very excited, delighted? Mandy? Um, Maybe not. When it was announced. What was your reaction in March? Yeah. yeah, I thought it was interesting, an interesting choice. And I like the fact that he's almost like an art director. Mm -hmm. So he directs everybody to do his, create his vision. Um, so in that respect, and I think I probably expected it to be a bit more dapper down with all the monogram and everything, but it was a lot more subtle but clever. Um, so, yeah, it was good anticipation. And also, the last few days have been insane, the stuff he's released. The teas, the films, um, you know, showing the rehearsal of um, the score um, and all the layers just clashing. I mean, that's just... Um, and also the Instagram TV. He's one of the first to use the long, long view and uh, he's, he's definitely pressing all those kind of Instagram online moments. It's definitely quite a new thing, this sharing and you know, all the teasing. I wonder, you know, what did you think about being able to see so much of the show before the show? Well, I mean, I guess we work in communications and I think mm. that's a big part of why. I mean, I was super excited when it was announced. Mm. Um, as, you know, it's, it's interesting now that it was so polarizing when you're in this mm. moment where you see mm. everybody's reaction to it. But I think a big part of the reason that people are excited about it for those that, that are or were is that Virgil's approaching fashion communications in a way that I don't think any other yeah. designer is. And really unapologetically, mm. um, I guess the idea of speaking so directly and so frequently directly to the consumer mm -hmm. and kind of letting the media make their commentary on that mm. rather than I guess, you know, the typical model of speaking to the media and let them tell your story for you. Um, that's, that's super exciting to me from, I guess, more of an industry perspective. And you think that's really unique to Virgil, that idea of him speaking directly to the buyer? I think, a lot, of, I think a lot of people are doing it and people are doing it in different ways, but I can think of a few examples that are so mm. extreme. Josh, what's your take? Yeah, I think just kind of like looking at when we, you, you can revisit over the last few seasons how people have done straight from runway or mm. that whole pre-commerce culture that's starting to come in, trying to have, you know, mm. first to market, if you will. But that's, a, you know, what you were saying about Rihanna and everyone kind of wearing little mm. accents of the collection and people being able to kind of decipher, is that mm. from this or what is that? And creating that buzz that way is a more organic way of doing it. And you're then people... Coming, sorry, you're just... No, no, carry on. Because you're coming at it from quite... A unique perspective because obviously you don't use social media. Yeah, I haven't seen, seen it. Before. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, you know what we're saying. Social media up in the run up to this show played a huge part. You know, there were teasers every day, every other hour. It felt like there was this huge glut of information. But from your perspective, you know, you, you weren't 
aware of that, you weren't yeah, yeah, seeing yeah. that. But did you still feel the anticipation that I definitely felt to, in the run up to the show? I'd already anticipated that that would be the case. Like, you only have to look at both of his accounts from an off way or from a personal perspective. You can see the, the demand that he has. I almost like treat this the way that his audience almost has this kind of digital tribe who just are uh, constantly following. Like, he refers to it in his lexicon as fandom. And, yeah. you know, that is, it's, it's true to, true to his word. He has got such a unique force who, who are following, who will buy into and worship him in that sense. Yeah. That's what we were waiting to see, I think, how he could define it separate to Off-White, because, mm. you know, it's so easy to blur them. Um, and, and when I've been seeing his Instagram feed this week, it's almost like, you know, Off-White, Louis Vuitton, it, it can get confusing. Especially because it's um, so much about him. Yeah, and I was curious to see you know, all those kids that he has at his off-white show, would they be in this show? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, was, I, was, I really liked the casting of the show. I thought that was quite interesting. Um, and, you know, everything considered. But at the end of the day, he's probably the bus busiest guy in fashion. And I think the first thought that went through my mind was how can he actually manage it all? Mm -hmm. But in Sarah Moa's review of the off-white show, um, she was saying he was so chilled, so relaxed. Mm -hmm. And then um, I think in his um, Instagram TV film, um, that was filmed by Baffet, a really beautiful film. Um, Baffet, who um, is very inspired by, by the movie La N, so it's almost like CCTV vibe, mm -hmm. but you're getting a glimpse inside Louis Vuitton HQ. Mm -hmm. um, it was just quite fascinating, really, how he's, he's so chilled. He doesn't actually feel like he's working. He says in that film that he doesn't feel like he's, he's worked since he did his graduate um, at the... Illinois Institute of Technology. And I just thought, how can you say that? Of course you get stressed, of course, of course yeah. you graft, of course you feel pressure, how dare you? Um, but he, he's, there's something, he's super organized. He always keeps quoting, very relevant to show studio, Peter Saville. Um, he did that in his Harvard address, um, where he says, um, everyone's a stylist. You know, everything's been done, we're all styling. Yeah. Andy, you, like Virgil, have done your homework. <laughs> not messing about. Mm -mm. But I'm really interested in, as well in this idea that you just you mentioned of this portal into the Louis Vuitton world, because it really feels like, you know, Vuitton has a very rich legacy, but we have really seen in the past few weeks kind of a glimpse into what it can be like and what he's creating. And, you know, Virgil is so lauded for bringing luxury and sort of, you know, democratising it in a sense if if we're going down that route. But do we think that that's something that he is or will do successfully, you know, bring the luxury of Louis Vuitton to the public? Do you mean in terms of price point and accessibility? I like more meant in terms of concept, mm -hmm. but we can talk in terms of price point too. I think it's happening now, mm -hmm. actually. Yeah, agreed. I feel that there's certain pieces in that, in that show, I think that rapper that I mentioned earlier, Octavia Nessie, um, he was wearing that um, sheer t-shirt with the with the LV and white on it and like mm. as soon as I saw that look um, just from Instagram um, it was like oh my god I need that, that piece which is actually what what you want from a good show isn't it that's the sort of emotion that the desire that drive yeah. to buy yeah well, let's watch the show let's dive in we're talking so much about it now already and obviously Josh it's your first oh yeah time. I'm in excited I am very much so <laughs> feel the hype very can we um have the music as well if possible Oh yeah, he invited loads of students to this, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, they were design students, right, yeah. from local schools. He gave them all t-shirts as mm -hmm. their invitation. And the show was like capacity of like 2,500, as opposed to roughly 1,000. Mm -hmm. So obviously we can see from the set that there's this rainbow carpet. Was it Ricardo Tisky who did that in New York with his show where he invited students? That feels like a very New York yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah, it is quite, I guess, can The colour thing was a well. prism, wasn't it? He said because it starts with white and yeah. then it goes into the prism of colour. So I don't, it has maybe a slightly different reference to the rainbow reference. We, we just saw the band as well, didn't we? Bad, Bad, Not Good, yeah. who, um, with Benji B, did the score, the original score to the show, and you mentioned that he mixed it with Kanye mm -hmm. tunes. I think it's when you see this, you understand the, the scale and what kind of what this whole thing actually means, mm. him being there. Like, yeah. this is, it's quite surreal in that sense. 
Yeah, because I think marking it again, you know that really infamous picture of Kanye, him, and like three others outside the issue. Briefcase I, moment. Yeah, yeah, the briefcase yeah. moment, 2009, so yeah. nine years ago now. But they look like such sort of dorks and so outsidery. Didn't get into the market <laughs> shows. You can imagine every PR getting that request being like, mm -hmm. absolutely not. So then do this. It's one of my favourite images. Yeah, it's up there, man. It's up there, yeah. The yeah. blue gilet. Oh, is this your tea? Good. Yeah, that's your yeah. tea. I think the ceramic link necklace, you didn't, you didn't see it on that look. I just saw it on Instagram. But all, the, all that hardware hanging off the bags is ceramic. It's like a ceramic mm. link. But actually, on some of these black guys walking down the runway, it's quite symbolic. You know, mm. having a white um, enamel ceramic neck chains, the chains in ceramic. Yeah. He's already been called out for copying a young designer on that already. I saw on Instagram, though. Who was that? Really? You know um, I, I can't oh. actually remember the name well, of it. Well, I kind of feel like coloured yeah. chains are, are, have been, you know, they're, they're in and out the whole time, aren't they? Sometimes it's the diet Prada color. effect, though, isn't yeah. it? It's like yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And obviously, Virgil's fallen foul of diet Prada so much. Yeah. And I wonder, are, you, is anyone, are we picking up on any references? So far, he's still in his white looks. I thought that suit in that group just mm. there that Montel was wearing mm. with the really baggy pants and the blazer slightly short, I mean, that was a really beautiful suit. I really love that, mm. I think. That's kind of a lasting impression that I've had of the show. Interesting. It gets into some sort of like technical layering stories in a moment that are, that are really, really strong, I think. Yeah, everyone that we know um, on Instagram was saying spot Kim. They were all doing yeah. pictures where she's just somewhere. Because it was her, <laughs> as you mentioned before, it's her first time in Paris since the, yeah. the heist. So it's yeah. a big moment. Yeah. yeah. The casting is really good. Yeah. It does look good. I mean, that's quite early This rap. is great. That yeah. Yeah. So good. Obviously, Raph isn't his biggest fan. Now we can see the colour coming in. Yeah. And Josh, you mentioned the word on the um, show notes, the excessomorphous thing. And this is something that he's talked about quite a lot, this idea of the moment between a garment and an accessory, the idea of kind of wearing a bag across the body. Mm -hmm. And so quite a lot of these pieces That's that he's pulled in here, this is sort of the in-between that he's trying to build on this. walking so slowly. <laughs> just wants everyone to see him. <laughs> this is his moment. Do you know what yeah. I mean, though? I mean, it must be purposeful, but... His friends have been arriving all the last few days. It's been interesting to see them all converge on mm. Paris. I know that Grace Ladoja yeah. was on a private jet today, and she said Paris for three hours. Really? And quite a few... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Skepta might have been on that. I'm not sure that Skepta was at the show, but... Yeah. Um, the most loved man in fashion. Yeah, and he had the televised radio as well for the last three days at Louis Vuitton HQ, and he released a playlist of all the Lil Yachty, ASAP, everybody's playing. It's definitely you know, kind of a family affair. There are so many of his friends and collaborators who actually walked in the show as well as sitting in the yeah. front row. I mean, Kid Cudi's in it, the Affiliates London, Dev Hines is walking. I think Blondie McCoy is here at some point as well. I like that being like an extension of, uh, we know that he's collaborated mm. with everyone and anyone in that sense, but this show might be a defining moment that is, it's a, co a collaboration with his circle. Mm. Yeah, like that's, community, you know, extended that family. Can, exactly, and we're looking at that community aspect and bringing that into something that's so big. It wants more highlights, you know, Virgil's stamp on the house. He is the king of collaboration. Mm. He's bringing that into his his new role rather than yet again being a collaborator. Yeah. I hope Ian Connor has nothing to do with this, so I must say. I think I might have spotted. Who? Ian Is he there? Connor. Accused of many yeah, no, no, crimes I know. against women. Absolutely. We saw the first look from this collection at the Met Gala mm. as well, him wearing it. Yeah, he did. I wasn't too keen on the little split ankle mm. though. I've, I saw. Have you spotted that on the runway? Yeah. But they might all be wearing them next you week. You never know, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of reminiscent of, I have those Kappa trousers. Oh, yeah. Popper pants. Popper. Yeah. They always unpopper, like, always. 
I don't know whether it was in the show, but I saw on Instagram, you know these um, vests with the pockets? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They did that in the Louis Vuitton monogram. I mean, it didn't need to be in the show, but yeah. oh my God, what a piece. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, kind of just, that's it, yeah. yeah. Like one of those photographer's jackets with all the pockets. Yeah. That bag's really good. Oh, that's the, I think that's the... Non-monogram. Non-monogram DJ trunk. Yeah. Nice. nice. And what, what he, he called it a weird name. It's Helmut Lang Louis Vuitton Grandmaster Flash. <laughs> and it's got a section in it for your coat when you're DJing so that when you're DJing, your coat doesn't get smoke, smoky or get a drink spill over it. Essential. Yeah. That is kind yeah. Vital. Virgil. Thank you. Very practical. <laughs> Josh, you're swaying. Are you enjoying the music? I'm just, it's more, I'm just more like this whole production. I'm a bit just kind of like... Lull? Taken back. No, no. Okay, so not it's what I expected. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a lot of looks. Like 50 odd. I think it's 56. I feel like that could have been a lot more extravagant. I think mm. that's, that's mm. an edit. I feel like it's that's an edit. Yeah, I think so. He also didn't want this show to kind of say too much. I think... Mm. You know, he wanted to ease himself into it. He's he was very wary of that. Statement of he knows that everyone's watching to see what he does. He, felt, he said he felt like the black cowboy. Mm. Interesting. And yeah, can you imagine own... that level of pressure? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Yesterday. It's just, it doesn't, honestly doesn't even bear thinking about. Yeah, so like show on Tuesday, rest today, yeah. and then show today. Mm -hmm. This is very strange. Oh, is that that Dorothy piece? Yeah. So that print? Yeah, it's got the poppies print all across it, and then cheese on there too. Is that the significance of the rainbow wall as well? I don't know. Maybe. Yes, that, I think that's few. where they were doing the after show. That was like the backdrop, wasn't it? Oh, really? Yeah, there are a few pieces that reference The Wizard of Oz. I think he's also done a new interpretation of the monogram where it's all solid colour. I mean, I know monogram means two colours, but for Louis Vuitton, we can say that. Mm. Um, so it's all solid. So the hardware in ceramic, the leather, and the monogram is all the same colour. A lot of primary colours as well. Oh. I made a similar noise when I saw that. Some bit. people on Instagram have been uh, calling that the Tin Man because of, Dor of ah, Wizard of Oz. Right. Mm. It would look more like a safety blanket, like the <laughs> final, if they don't like it. Do you see the bit where he comes out? I want to see see that, yeah. I'm loving all the aerial shots. Mm. Yeah, it is. It feels quite monumentous to watch. Mm. I know, when you see that rainbow at Burberry, it, it, for me it feels quite, quite camp, yeah. whereas that rainbow here is quite more masculine. Yeah. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but there's just something quite interesting about having that at this show. Yeah. Well, I think, it, you know, the rainbow, and having, been, having seen that symbol so much, particularly at London Fashion Week, mm -hmm. obviously it, it's such a close an, an indication of you know, queer identity and pride, and it doesn't, I don't, I'm, I don't know if that was a... Yeah. On the, a purposeful thing, but it doesn't feel to me that that's what this rainbow represents. But we're we're about to go into Pride, aren't we, in London? Is that? Um, uh, I wonder if it's illusory. Is it? An, uh, love, is it global? It the Pride? What are the yeah. dates? Are they around now? I think the July. So yeah. maybe that was a New salute. York a prides, salute to I that. I think New York Pride's already happened. Okay. I think it's now. It's. Yeah. It, I think we're in it. Yeah. And, and also, there's a big London presence in this show, mm. in the show and and at the show. Yeah. But is there sort of perhaps a tension of the idea of, you know, Virgil using the pride flag at a Louis Vuitton show? You know, when Burberry did that, there, you know, lots of people were very excited about it, but there were questions raised about the commodification of something I like think, that. I think just reflecting a little bit on what he said about the prism of colour, mm. um, it's his celebration of colour, isn't it? Mm -hmm. and, mm. and I think, like a lot of people at the moment, he wants people to have their own interpretation of it as well. Yeah. Well, like the show notes, he's done the kind of like global mapping of where his model's providence is from or their parents or something like that. And the casting is very reflective of that and genuinely reflective. They haven't got the only kind of like palatable black model as the wants in there. Like he, that's very clever. And I guess it's just a symbol of optimism, isn't mm. it? And it's open to interpretation yeah. however you choose to. There was something that came out during men's last Look season. Look at the colours coming out now. That oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. yeah. As in, oh, there we, there we go. That's the big clue. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's just in January. There was, I remember, it was talking, looking at ethnicity and diversity within yeah. kind of casting. I remember uh, it highlighted. It did 
all the men's shows in January. It was a little, it was a little chart. Right. I remember GMBH so, yeah. being one of the top. Yeah. That was super. Just like that felt like quite a mm. like an, an amazing moment. Mm. Um, so you know, I'm glad it's kind of transcending into this, and we're seeing more of that. And it does feel like all of this collection is, you know, very considered from having you know, the rainbow on the floor with the set, having the map and the show notes, and then simply to have such a wide selection of wide white looks, mm. contrast all the colours. Everything feels considered. Okay, so this is the big that moment. That was a, a solid black model and in the white exactly, clothes as well. Yeah, exactly. a bit of symbolism. Here we go. Aww. This is... <laughs> Kim very courteously keeping her distance. Yeah. Aww. I mean, that is just it, isn't it's it? pretty major, that, isn't it? Tony's done. Who doesn't love a bromance? Mm. It's quite sweet seeing Kim Jones and um, Virgil this week, you know, saluting each other yep. and, you know, it's a genuine friendship and mm. respect, I think, as well. I think one of the key things that does come away from that, obviously, particularly with that ending, is it does feel very friendly and about respect and mm -hmm. about, you know, looking at his predecessors, looking at what Kim did, looking at what Mark Jacobs has done, but having that feeling of openness. And inclusivity. Mm. And I think it's probably worth noting that it must be quite difficult to maintain that spirit when you are under such scrutiny, less mm. so now at showtime, you know, when there's probably a little bit more good willing. Um, but at, at that time around the announcement, you know, I think it's, it's quite bold to just maintain that mm. sense of family and optimism and openness. Mm. Especially yeah. like from a sales point of view, Louis Vuitton is a huge part of LVMH's profits. Mm -hmm. So if he's not just been chosen for being a hype kid, he's obviously got the massive expectation mm. of retaining or improving those sales. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so exactly, there's like a massive commercial pressure that he's got to fulfill mm -hmm. and live up to. And I'm sure he will. I mean, I can already like the hype beasts are on that bag, mm -hmm. aren't they? You can see a few of the yeah, details of the pieces here. But do we DJ think this trunk. did feel commercial? Commercial enough, yeah. It was safe enough, but while also mm -hmm. like pleasing the kind of... He, he wasn't too streetwear. Mm -hmm. He did... not too had a, Exactly. He had mm -hmm. enough surprises. He didn't do anything too close to Kim or too sort mm -hmm. of, you know, deferential to Mark or anything, but it definitely had notes of everyone at the same time. I think it was smart. It was like understated and quite mm -hmm. smart. See, I told you, I 180. Maybe yeah. I'm a huge hype beast now. <laughs> Is anyone still feeling sceptical after watching that? Surprised? Yeah? Yeah, and slightly. I just think, you know, obviously, in that, we were talking about that Charlie Porter piece mm. in the Financial Times. So, you know, him stating that the first thing he went into there, when he went in there, was to make a t shirt. And I'm like, okay, you've been making t shirts for six years, but. You know, like it's obviously what he's trying to get the perfect weight. He's yeah. trying to like master it. If you're trying to be a master of something, I'm all for that. Mm. Um, and then he was talking about kind of dabbling with like, I think it was double face hoodies and tailoring stitching and stuff. And, and uh, delivering it in cashmere, right? Yeah, you know. And they, yeah, that's just, it's just. ASOS can, have just banned cashmere? They have. Mohair, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. Sorry. <laughs> well, they, you know, we could talk about like LVMH and Kering kind of coming from a more sustainable angle, trying to mm -hmm. cover their tracks that way. So it'd be interesting to see if Virgil taps into that at some point. I don't know. Um, but I really want to touch on what we were, you were saying earlier about accessibility. Yeah. What is, how do we look at that now? How does that translate? What does that mean? Yeah. Because how does that translate in terms of distribution? He is going to be releasing surprises the whole time. Wow. I, I, I really think that's going to happen. Mm. You know, he's going yeah. to have these secret drops. I don't think the show is the whole story. Interesting. No. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. he also did a T-shirt that was on everyone's seats, which was a photocopy of a T-shirt or something in a bright colour. Yeah. He did it on the office photocopier yeah. or something. Yeah. <laughs> he said, he said in his text, he was like, this uh -huh. was the first time I managed to use the office photocopier, yeah. which is quite sweet. He talks a lot about the, the production of T-shirts mm. rather than like just T-shirts in a, a lot of the interviews that he's given and that's he's done that for years and years he uses the t-shirt as mm. this kind of like I guess center point for what streetwear is and what it can mean you know he talks about 
defining streetwear as crafting That's something. That's a t-shirt, isn't it? Oh, the rolled up yellow yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right there, okay. Yeah, so he talks about the idea of streetwear meaning, you know, something that can come from having limited means, mm -hmm. you know, and the skate community being a, an extension of that. And um, it's an, yeah, it's an interesting narrative. It's not just a t-shirt, I guess. And Alexandre Arnaud was talking about this before the show and was yeah. sort of highlighting that thing that people were expecting, perhaps, sort of streetwear or skatewear. And he was saying before, you know, both Virgil and Kim, they're not doing that right now. Mm -hmm. But I wonder, do you think some people will look at this and think, but I kind of wanted that? But I just think it was in there as well it at was. the same time. Yeah, like, definitely. There was like that kind of, like you were saying, with yeah. the baggy trousers and everything. Like, kind of oh, that soft tailoring was beautiful. Yeah, was, exactly. Yeah. And the kind of like tucked in t shirts with the baggy trousers. I mean, there was like huge skate influence there. Mm -hmm. And he also, that graffiti writer who he said he was, what was it then? Joe, John, Joe, yeah, something like that. that when he does the tag all over New York. Yeah. Rob, Joe Rob or Rob Joe. Something like that, exactly. And that he was like heavily influenced by. And that's like a direct, you know, graffiti and skateboarding mm -hmm. are like completely linked. Off I've track. seen a lot of stuff where Virgil's been embroidering. He's been recreating the Louis Vuitton, but writing it. You know how he writes on all his sneakers? Yeah. Um, writing the Louis Vuitton logo, that's all a bit weird. Have you been seeing that? Yeah, when he's putting it in inverted commas. Yeah. Right. Oh, no, please, no, inverted no, commas. No, 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 we're over the inverted commas. Yes. <laughs> I think we're going to have to get used to it, unfortunately. I don't think and then also, yeah, also, I don't think that's going anywhere. Inverted comma anywhere. Oh, not here. I think in Virgil's lexicon. I right, think that's. Right. I think Go, it's going to uh, cemented in his lexicon, actually. Oh, in his um, glossary. In his he's, he's also oh, been um, embroidering the logo, so it's almost like you know you've got a, a label in the clothing, but you know people can take them out, stick them on other clothes. There's all the counterfeit, but taking the bespokeness, the haute couture, to another level where you're actually embroidering the logo. Mm. I thought that was quite an interesting one. Twist. It's nice to see him utilise the resources. You know, like it's obviously what he's been striving for yeah. through Off White. I think that's yeah. what people forget when the designers, you know, like me and Sophie have worked with a lot of young designers and when they get to that next level where they go and work for a maison or a house, the resources that they suddenly have, you know, from mm. actually thinking about making their own tweed or making, you know, suddenly somebody's there to say, how do you want this fabric? What do you want doing with it? And they don't need to do anything more than that. They come back with it a few days or a few yeah, weeks yeah. later. It, it's quite staggering how you can elevate how you normally have so really um this is only just the beginning mm. and obviously you know looking at the accessories in this collection looking at the bags you know these are the products that louis vuitton is known for and it started for it feels i mean from my perspective it does feel like he is respecting the codes of the house and respecting yeah. where louis vuitton as a brand started but putting his twist on it and putting an elevated twist on it not not the plastic tags of off-white, these, you know, chunks. I think slight chains. modifications. Mm -hmm. There was the, the, little, the little barrel bag mm -hmm. that is, is been a, I think, a women's bag more than men's. You know, that little barrel, the narrow one. In the Instagram TV film, um, he was saying to the guys in the studio, a little longer. So he's, like, modifying things, making them look a little bit fresher, maybe playing with perspectives. Mm -hmm. Is that the one that zips off? Like, looks like a. No, but there was one that zipped off in it. Some woman in the studio wore it over their thigh. I didn't see that in the show. I thought that was an interesting concept that you can like have these bags mm. that wrap on you. I guess that his eye for detail is sort yeah. of second to none in terms of yeah that idea of modification is really key to the way he designs. He's an he's an architect, right? Mm. Mm. A lot of depth in that show. A lot of you know stories, mm. you know, groups. There was no kind of. I mean, bar, that's a bad. A, a, image to fall on as I'm going to say this but there's not really any kind of ridiculous fashion moments in there mm. there's nothing okay. there's nothing yeah, I don't think so there's nothing that you looked at and you thought that's unmarable not really would you say then a t-shirt so what was that a white t-shirt with the white LV I like that a lot <laughs> <laughs> that. are there any other pieces that you're really coveting I think the tailoring was beautiful not it's really interesting yeah, though because he people don't go to him like someone like off you know Virgil or off white for tailoring they'll go mm. to like a I don't know you either go like Xenia or Belusi or you mm. go like Martine Rose or a Charles Jeffrey kind of thing so it'll be interesting to see how that actually mm. translates because mm. it's Whether not selling to the hype beast that tailoring but I think that it's a new generation of mm. hype beast though I think that mm. his 
maybe off-white customer because you know it's been quite how long has off-white been going it's a while now yeah. i think that his customers actually ready to elevate mm -hmm. and they're a bit more grown up maybe they've got a more disposable income now yeah. i think they're ready to kind of up their wardrobe game mm -hmm. and maybe um wearing some suiting or you know soft tailoring um is a good direction for kind of people that have just been living in streetwear for so long i mean streetwear was an antidote to suiting um, so maybe, you know, it might go the other way again. I, I've had the same belief in that, that I've, I've always wanted the, the off-white customer to evolve. And I think, you know, you have, the brands themselves are creating the limitations. You know, they're providing off-white will cap you on how many t-shirts you can buy. You know, they want you to buy into more key pieces, mm -hmm. outerwear, those things that are retailing for over a grand. But realistically, how does that convert? How does that translate? And mm -hmm. To be cut, like brutally frank, like I don't think that customers buying into that just yet. I, but I have the complete faith that they will. Like yeah. you know, if you want, but he's the almost like he, portal for that. For sure, totally. Like if he's going to go to Louis Vuitton and like create the best tailored, pleated, baggy pant mm -hmm. that's rather, you know, then yeah, do it and let kids buy into that. I just mm -hmm. don't know. Yeah, I like always think about when I think about Vuitton before. It was always that brand that was kind of featured in magazines, and it would be, you know, it's obviously it styled in an editorial. Tangible, exactly. Mm -hmm. But there's something, a tiny bit of me, I like accessibility, but a tiny bit of me that likes that little, mm -hmm. like me. Distance. Exactly, and not being able to, like, get hold of that. Um, so, you know, it'd be interesting to see if that maintains and. With this. I, have a, I have a real issue with these brands where you go to their stores like, um, you know, Chanel, mm. um, Louis Vuitton, you go to any of their stores and they're all the same. So what's mm. the point in going shopping at the one there when you've got your own? We've got a fabulous one on Sloan Street or Bond Street. And um, I think uh, that with the what I expect he will do, we'll have a lot of limited edition products that will just go into certain stores or certain pop-ups. I can imagine that kind of thing happening. Yeah, if anyone's going to sort of shift traffic to specific places yeah. to buy limited product, it is. You can imagine him even doing a, a small range that will go in Dover Streets mm -hmm. kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. Like more of a Supreme model. Mm -hmm. He kind of wants the cues, doesn't he, in that way? Yeah. Hype. But also you've got to give credit to Kim because that whole Supreme thing took Louis Vuitton on this trajectory. trajectory. So Absolutely. the audience is ready to digest a Virgil wear, I think. It's yeah. like the ultimate laying of a foundation for somebody like yeah. Virgil, isn't it? Yeah. True. But as Virgil, what we're hoping is that, you know, Virgil will continue and stay in this role for a few years and develop. But I am interested in just, Josh, going back a bit to what you were saying. What do you think will therefore happen with Off-White? Obviously, Off-White showed a few days ago. I have my own opinion of the show, but it does feel like Virgil does a lot. Do we think that he has the capacity to continue both brands to the level that one might expect? It's going back to what Mandy was saying about that Sarah Moe interview and him being calm. If he can handle it, seems to have handled it so far, you know, with so many, a multitude of projects on, that he's got going on. And We're good at masquerading at being calm, aren't we? So <laughs> one moment. He's always, Virgil's like always been, he's just always been that guy, you know, he's always been two seconds Chilled. getting on a plane or getting off one like he really has for for years since mm. he was just doing you know pyrex and stuff and i think recently in an interview he said he gets on he travels eight or nine times a week and he really yeah. does which is quite you know he's got a good experience for going into the most famous travel brand in the world arguably um <laughs> he, he you know he's a he's a traveler by all accounts so um yeah i think he i think he can totally hand it and look he's got the resource to mm -hmm. back it up um, they wouldn't take him, give him that position mm -hmm. if they thought otherwise, and he wouldn't I'm sure it's been dare take length. that position if yeah. he didn't think he could yeah, hack it either. Mm -hmm. um, and I imagine that Off White is kind of self-fulfilling. Sure. He probably they probably send him stuff to just approve, and he sends exactly, back yeah. sketches. Yeah. He does I mean, a lot he's of kind stuff of got over, that down over now, right? Like in Snapchat terms of and, yeah, in terms of what, what establishing what it is. I'm not saying it's not, never going to develop or change or you know mm. evolve as a label, but. He's got almost less to prove mm. on that front. Yeah. I think it'll kind of keep itself running for a little bit. I think Off White can kind of do itself. Do what Off White does. Still sell itself. Mm. I wonder how, so. it'd be interesting to see for how long though. Yeah. And see if that is going to continue and see mm. if what we were saying earlier, if everyone is going to shift to yeah. Vuitton. And if I, I think it's a different audience actually. 
I think the off-white, you know, I think it's a little bit like um, with uh, Supreme, you know, the core Supreme, they couldn't even afford the Louis Vuitton collaboration if they even tried, mm -hmm. you know, so yeah, it true. definitely was a luxury customer. The people yeah, that were queuing at those pop-ups for the Supreme Louis Vuitton were, were very wealthy yeah. kids mm -hmm. um, or the ones that want to sell them on. Yeah. So I, I, th I think it's a different audience. Interesting. What did you think of the show, the off-white show? The off-white show. I, well, I actually thought it um, didn't give as much as I was expecting because it felt like Virgil had all of this impetus behind him and I felt like the off-white show was... I feel like actually looking at both sort of side by side, it makes a lot more sense than having seen it on its own. I think the off-white show felt that kind of cut and paste, lots and lots of layers and layers and layers of reference, whereas this, the Louis Vuitton felt cleaner and considered mm -hmm. and more pared back. Mm -hmm. And it felt very much like Off-White is doing what it has done for a long time, which is tapping into that mm -hmm. young customer, that person who's learning and scrapbooking almost and pulling their references together. Whereas the Louis Vuitton is, you know, an amalgamation of Virgil's experience to this point. Well, ultimately, I guess it's within the context of Louis Vuitton that if Virgil's going to attract the criticism that a, a Virgil tends to attract, mm. you know, that's where he needs to exercise a little bit more care in making sure that those things don't, you know, aren't, aren't true of him, you know, that he is, that he's delivering something that feels very considered non-referential, you know, all of the things, all, all of the things that he's accused of, I guess, by people that are critical of his work, but maybe it can be now that Off-White is able to kind of amp up Mm -hmm. It just exists as this thing that, that isn't getting that level of criticism mm -hmm. because Off-White can speak directly to the people that care about Off-White. Louis yeah. Vuitton is being talked about by an infinitely broader group of people, you know. I think he's got um, a good family life as well and he travels a lot. So I think to have this best of both worlds and this kind of life with his extended family that we all know, the musicians mm -hmm. and all the, all the creatives... He has to be kind of have this brutal time management and you know that is how i think that's how he exists mm. you know i think when he did that um uh, address at harvard um i think he'd almost like planned it on his way there mm. you know and he showed his notes on the screen and it was just really interesting how he how he operates and his principles he very much does enjoy something that we're big fans of here at show studio which is showing the process mm -hmm. showing yes. how he yeah. gets there and as much as he has called out for you know, being overly referential, he's very quick to show where that came from. Mm -hmm. And I think that is something that in, you know, in Off-White has managed to speak to people so much because it, it feels like it does have a sense of honesty. But I wonder whether that will translate at Louis Vuitton somewhere where, which is more traditionally closed in, in a sense. I think it shows great confidence when you are transparent like that. For sure. And I think that the tease of this week has just been fever pitch mm -hmm. yeah. you know I kind of thought to myself is this really because I thought oh is this who I'm following mm. or is this what everyone's experiencing and I think the kind of layers and groups of people that were sharing information about it I'd be interested to know the figures because yeah. I think it was really clever and especially with the Instagram TV which is going to catch on when you watch a film that's like 11 12 minutes long on Instagram who'd have thought it but you know you stick with it there's no fast forward I think it's going to make Instagram into this even more immersive um, medium we were talking about that weren't we well, yeah like attention spans and yeah. the fact that it started at 15 seconds. Nick, no, Nick's, so. Nick's, Nick's going to be... <laughs> so, yeah, so he's, saying, yeah. <laughs> he's all over it. <laughs> Have you ever had Instagram? Or uh, yeah, yeah, I've had it. Yeah, yeah, just, it just doesn't really do anything for me. Mm. So. You didn't get addicted? No, not really, no. Mm. Uh, I've, I've definitely dabbled in it, but it didn't, didn't suck me in. Interesting. Yeah. Are you addicted, sure? Yes. <laughs> It's very corrosive, but mm. obviously for brands and things mm. like this, but I think for like, there's like a big conversation obviously in fashion about mental health a lot of the time, mm. and I think it is corrosive for that, um, especially as you're looking around constantly at your peers, constantly mm. com cross comparing, and either it can kind of pull you with the impetus to do more, 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 which obviously it did with him, like with that, sure. you know, from 2009 to this, but I think um, aside from that, there is like a danger with it as well, mm. which we've obviously all discussed, and I think also the kind of 
the working culture which he perpetuates of like team no sleep, like work hard, mm. like all that kind of thing. I think there's a danger there with someone like that who can probably cope with it for whatever reason. There is a danger to glorifying that kind of mm. working culture at the same time because as we've seen from previous designers at big fashion houses, when they've gone from being at CSM or wherever, then they've had their own label, you know, McQueen, mm. John Galliano, then they've gone to the big fashion mm -hmm. houses as well as doing that in conjunction. It can just equal burnout. Um, which isn't good on a personal level. He'll have a contract though, where if, if it is a bit much, he'll just have to lose off white. Mm. Mm. Simple as. Sure. But, but I, I think he'll hack it. Mm. I think he'll hack it, but that's a very interesting very point. Yeah, about it, yeah. 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 And also that leads us to think a little bit about how actually, you know, emotional this show was mm. to watch. I mean, I think... The people that were there were very emotional. Yeah, everyone, you know, you could see felt very emotional. And of course, that last moment when Virgil hugs Kanye, that's going to go, you know, all over the world and, you know, be seen by... How many seconds was it, that hug? <laughs> it was a long one. <laughs> it was quite long, long, long well, you know, it felt good and emotional. There's going to be a lot of memes, right? Yeah, I think so. also it hasn't, you know, he's the first um, black designer at, at, like, at the head of an LVMH house, isn't he? Mm. Which is like a massive deal. Well, this leads me to my question, which is perhaps a bit difficult to ask, but, you know, 30 seconds that. <laughs> 30 <laughs> second <laughs> hug. You know, this, this is a moment that does indicate quite a seminal change in fashion. You know, Virgil is the first black designer in an LVMH led group. And that is undeniably, you know, a massive change and a massive positive push forward in the industry. But in the, in the run up to the show, I was reading a lot of press and there was a lot of press and everything just felt incredibly positive and, you know, unquestioning. And I did wonder whether it was that, you know, Virgil has done this incredible thing and that the symbol of what has happened made him sort of impervious to real critique. Mm. That people were unwilling to critique his designs because of the symbolic nature. I think there has been negativity as well. There definitely has. Lots of it, scepticism. There definitely has. And I agree with you that it's been, um, I guess, mildly surprising and great if if you agree to see all of the positive commentary, particularly over the last like sort of five days, I would say. Um, but I don't think it's been like that mm. in the full lead. Um, it's just a nice, it's a nice kind of PR narrative arc. Mm. So many amazing big profiles come out over, you know, like bang, bang, bang over a couple mm. of days. That's great. Did you see the narrative PR arc as you put it? Sort of, did you feel a change? In that because the last few days have certainly felt like that you know there's been a like there's an amazing piece in the ft there was a brilliant piece on boff um there's been a, there's been a lot uh yeah i think it's sure. the world cycle as well yeah. like you know the you know non-gender gender models mm -hmm. the whole modeling industry mm -hmm. i think it's part of the wave isn't it mm -hmm. um i was also um just thinking you know today about the 70s design no the 80s designer Patrick who was black in Paris. Mm -hmm. He was the guy who did all the big buttons yeah. on um, primary colours. And I was just thinking, gosh, you know, isn't it... It's just quite poignant, you know, the fact that Virgil's here and we've got social media and mm -hmm. so many platforms and, you know, all this buzz and it's infectious. Mm -hmm. um, but Patrick Kelly, you know, there's no social media then and there's very limited archives of his work now. He's almost like, you know, pre much pre-internet sure. and um, it just made me think about you know what it's like to be a black designer in Paris now compared to you know all those years ago. Yeah particularly in somewhere like Paris I think which historically hasn't had the best of attitudes towards mm. that kind of thing. Um, it is like a big landmark moment and I think he has been critiqued a lot because I think previously had he been I mean, it would be interesting to see a designer who was maybe from a slightly different background who had had the education that he had, which is, you know, an architecture degree from a well-respected university. If he, if he had been a different race, would that have been a different reaction? Because then a lot of the critique has been, um, you know, you're not a real designer, you've only got this. But he's an extremely educated at the end of the day, though I don't always agree with the pastiching and the, like, constant references. I think it's an interesting point nonetheless. I think when you make these big hires now, um, you know, you're not just going to, you know, you really get to know somebody before you employ them. And regardless of all that, he is a nice guy. People love him. You know, he's popular. You can't do that many collaborations no. and have such success because collaborations 
is a very, there's a lot of tension with collaboration. Mm. As you're doing it, you're not sure whether it's going to be successful. You panic. There's a lot so of emotion loaded. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I think that, you know, his collaborations are just like, mm. it's like this avalanche. It's like never ending. You think, when is this going to burst? They're all cool. You know, I don't expect it not to be cool. It's almost like if you were cool, you'd do it, mm. you'd, you'd fail. Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, he, you know, he's just, um, they're obviously very comfortable with him. Mm. Well, I'm really interested to see how he gets on at Louis Vuitton, particularly because in, obviously in May, Gasquier's contract was renewed for five years. And, you know, I felt that there was something kind of, sim not necessarily symbiotic, but that worked with what Kim was doing and what Nicolas Gasquier was doing. And I wonder whether we feel like what Virgil's doing will work alongside, will these two big designers be able to coexist? Mm. They are so different. But he was heavily inspired by him, wasn't he? Because he said that he saw yeah. that Balenciaga collection and there was like a t-shirt or a jumper with, I don't know, some certain screen print that was like a direct rip. And he was like, well, if they're doing that there, maybe it was when he was at Balenciaga, mm. um, then I can do that. And it kind of fed into the, like, the Pyrex vision stuff. So I think, there, I think there will be. You don't think it will be too disparate? No, but I think no. there needs to be some dis like yeah, yeah. some disparity between the two. That's why you hire two separate people, right? Yeah. Yes. And you know, let's let's not forget that them, mm. these are two men that we're talking about. But there's an entire company infrastructure mm. and a team, you know, teams upon teams of people to guarantee that things don't Very smoothly. Don't yeah. Don't get. Um, it's funny they have this is, they have this issues last weekend in the Sunday Times, mm. uh, the Saturday Magazine, Giles Coran was talking about the tension with Marie, Marie Clotlin and the, the food critic on the Sunday Times. Oh, yeah. um, and they were saying about how, you know, the, with, when A.A. Gill was there, they've all very friendly coexisted, whereas now Marina's very, um, you know, no, we're not going to review the same places. And he was making a thing of that. I just saw a little parallel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that could happen. Creative <laughs> tension, though, it makes good works often, doesn't it? Even though it's painful. You think? Yeah, I don't know, like Mandy was saying, like a lot of collaboration is like, the process is difficult and hard mm. and rocky, mm. but then like when you're pulling it, like that's why it's interesting, because someone's pulling that way, someone's pulling it another way, you make something new. Right. Rather Even than, more beautiful than you exactly, ever imagined. Rather than someone being like a yes man all the time. You also had some um, sunglasses that I remember in the show that I saw on Instagram. You might have seen them. The they look like, yeah, they look like, Cazal, well, the Louis Vuitton version of Casals, and he said that yeah. they were inspired by I Farrell and that. Nigo. Yeah. yeah. Um, who was the original founder of Bathing Ape. Um, and uh, it's quite nice to see all these, again, family homages yeah. of his extended family. And I guess it's like the new generation of it. Like, you know, you, um, she's doing Dior now, isn't she, the jewelry? Yeah. 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 Um, him at Louis Vuitton. It's kind of like the new gen. Mm. Yoon's yeah. husband was in Farrell's band. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we're excited for the new establishment. We are. Yes. Just get Come on, guys, a bit more of a, you know. Yeah, it's shaking excited? up Paris. We all know old school Paris. When I was a young yeah. buyer going to Paris, yeah. I was so shocked at the lack of diversity. Yeah. I was very aware, and I'm not just saying this to satisfy this discussion, but I was very aware as a buyer um, in the late 80s, early 90s, that all the black people I saw were cleaning the toilets. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, and that kind of thing. And it's just really fantastic to see this diversity in a... In a real old school established sect which is how paris fashion is often referred to yeah i think it'll be interesting we have to like tbc i guess wait and see what yeah. he does next <laughs> so on that note tbc should we give him a round of applause let's yeah. go on